Cover crops are an important component of any crop rotation. They fulfill many soil health functions, including biofumigation. Biofumigation is the practice of growing specialized green manure cover crops for soil health benefits. This practice adds organic matter to the soil, as well as naturally occurring plant compounds, which can suppress soil-borne diseases, pests and weeds. The Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries has been evaluating biofumigant cover crops for the use in vegetable rotations. This research has focused on understanding how biofumigants perform under different growing conditions and seasons. Varietal differences in biofumigant activity and the diseases they suppress. How cover crop management influences biofumigant activity and how biofumigation impacts beneficial soil biology. John Duff is a plant protectionist with the Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries and has been leading this research. The main aim of our research is to look at cover crop options for growers. So we're looking at alternative cover crops that growers may be able to implement as part of their crop management program. The research that we've developed over the last few years, growers can use that as a guide to what they want to use a cover crop for, whether it's just as a, solely as a green manure crop or help with their soil health, so improving soil borne disease management. And the research that we've done over the last few years will help them, help guide them to do, choosing the right one for their situation. Brassica species are the main biofumigant cover crop option due to the significant amount of glucosinolate compounds contained within their plant cells. The fumigation effect from these crops requires a release of the glucosinolates from cells through physical disruption of the plant tissue. This is achieved by mulching the crop material. Once the glucosinolates are released, they combine with an enzyme, myrosinase, where they're converted into isothiocyanates, or ITCs, which are toxic to various soil-borne diseases, pests and weeds. The type and concentration of glucosinolates varies with variety, as does the ITCs produced and the diseases they are active against. Research has shown that brassica fumigants can be grown any time of the year. Days to incorporation varies between varieties and growing seasons, so you can choose a variety that fits within individual cover cropping windows. Glucosinolate levels are generally highest when grown over warmer months. This may be due to the production of glucosinolates as a stress response in warmer weather. In turn, suppression of soil-borne disease is generally greater during summer months. Greater amounts of plant material in the cooler months do not necessarily equate to greater levels of glucosinolates and improved activity against disease. Like any crop, biofumigant cover crops will attract a range of insect pests and diseases. However, not all biofumigants are susceptible to the same degree, and so control should only be carried out as necessary. We decided to look at biofumigants to control the issues we have with our ground. A lot of wilts in the ground, diseases in the ground, so we had to try something to eradicate them diseases. And mustard was an opportunity we thought we'd have a go at. And one of the benefits we've seen is it's controlled the disease that we did have in the ground. It's increased our yield after we've killed the disease and we've had a manure crop to chop in as well and that's all worked fine. We feel that you should do a lot of research on it. Our issues with our crops, you had to really do a lot of research and find out what you could put on, what rate, when you could plant it, plant back times. If you don't research it like that, it's, it's a waste of time. In summary, biofumigant cover crops can be grown year-round, are faster to reach 25% flowering for incorporation during summer, produce high concentrations of glucosinolates in summer, show higher activity against soil-borne diseases in summer, produce more plant material in winter, generally cause glucosinolate concentrations to increase as irrigation is reduced 
most likely as a stress response, and differ in their susceptibility to pests and diseases.